Hello and welcome everyone. I hope you've all been staying safe and healthy in these difficult times. My name is Luke and I'll be presenting today's webinar on importing Autodesk Eagle designs into Altium Designer. Sometimes we as designers may need to import projects from other CAD packages into Altium, either because our clients use another PCB design tool or because you have just moved to Altium. Today I will be covering the import of an Arduino design made in Eagle. To begin the import from Eagle to Altium Designer, there are a couple of files that you'll need. The source files that you'll need to do the import are the Eagle Schematic SCH file, the Eagle PCB BRD file, and an Eagle Library LBR file. These can be imported separately, so if you only have a schematic PCB or library file, you're still able to do an import, or you can do an import of all of these at the same time. Note, these will need to be from Eagle 6.4 or newer, however, I will be covering how to import files that are older than this. Now, let's head over to Altim so I can go over how to do the import. Now that we're over in Altim, the first thing that we need to do is ensure that the Eagle importer is installed. To do this, first click on the user icon in the upper right, then select Extensions and Updates. From here, we can click on Configure and scroll down to the Importers and Exporters. Make sure that the checkbox for the Eagle Importer is checked on. If it is not, do so, then click on Apply in the top right. Altium will then download the required files and install the Importer. Note that this will require a restart of Altium. My Importer is already installed so I won't need to do this. Once this is done, you can close the tab, then open the Importer by clicking on File and Import Wizard. This is where the majority of design files can be imported into Altium Designer. Clicking Next will take us to the Import Selection menu. Here we will choose to import Eagle projects and designs. Next we will need to select the schematic and PCB files we wish to import. To do so, click on Add this will open a file browser so that you can select the files you wish to import. I'm going to start by adding a PCB file to my importer. However, this sample design was made in an older version of Eagle, so as you can see, an error message has popped up. To import this file, it will need to be saved in the XML format used by newer versions of Eagle. This can be done using the free version of Eagle. For this demo, I have already converted the files to a newer version. Let us select both schematic and PCB and click on Open. As you can see, both files have now been loaded into the importer. Next, the importer allows you to add Eagle library files to the import. For this demo, I'm not going to be adding a library, so you can just click Next. The import will start to analyze the schematic in PCB. This can take some time, so we're just going to skip until it's done. Once the PCB file is analyzed, you'll be presented with the layer matching options. For this demo, I'm going to leave these as default. Next, you'll be given a few import options. These are for identifying power ports and cross sheet ports. Again, for this demo, I'm going to leave these at their defaults. Finally, we can choose what the output path for the imported files will be. By default, this will be a subfolder in the source files folder. When we click next, the import wizard will begin the import process. This can take a while, so I'm going to skip until it's done. Now that the import is complete, we can click on Finish to close the import wizard. As you can see, we now have an Altium project with a PCB and a schematic inside it, as well as a log file from the import, some component data, and net data. Heading over to the schematic, we can see that all the required data has been imported. You can now modify the schematic as needed. For instance, if you want to change the schematic template, you can do so by clicking on the Properties panel with nothing selected, scrolling down to the Page Options, and selecting a new template. I have a managed A3 template for EDA technology, so I'm going to use that. It is here. We will want to apply the schematic to all documents in the current project, and make sure that we are adding new parameters that exist in the template only. As we can see, some of the schematic is off-sheet, so let us move everything to be correctly on the sheet.
If we inspect the Atmega IC in this design, we will see that we have very limited information under the parameters. We can very easily add parameters to this component symbol by generating a library from the schematic and updating the component with manufacturer data and supplier data links. To do this, we click on Design, Make Schematic Library. You will then get the Component Grouping dialog. This will help in reducing the number of symbols generated by grouping components according to their various parameters. I'm happy with the default selection, so we'll click on OK. A schematic library will be generated and added to the project. As you can see, our schematic library has been populated by the components in our schematic. I would like to edit the design of the symbols in this library to fit our company standard, so let's modify the color of the pins and lines that make up the symbols. To do this easily, we can make use of the Find Similar Objects menu. Select and right-click on a pin and select Find Similar Objects. Ensure that the scope is set to All Components and that Select Matching is turned on. This will allow the selection of all the pins in the library. Once you're ready, click on OK. You can see here in the Properties panel that 144 objects are selected. This means that all the pins in the symbols of the library have been selected. Click on the color box next to the pin length and se select your preferred color. In this case, we're going to be going with black. We can follow the same process with the lines, making up the body of the symbol. This time, choosing blue. If I scroll through the components in the library, you'll see that most elements of the components have been changed. Repeat the process as many times as needed until all the symbols match your company standard. Now we can move on to updating the Atmega IC with some useful supplier and component parameters. To do this, focus the library on the component, then copy the part number from the comment field of the properties panel. Next, we click on the panels button in the lower right hand corner and select manufacturer part search. Now we paste the part number into the search field and press enter. In most cases, you will be presented with a number of results. In our case, we're going to go with the first result in this list. Click on the little arrow next to the SBN count. This will expand a list of suppliers and show a few details from each supplier. In this case, we're going to go with DigiKey as our part supplier. So we right click on the DigiKey field and select Add Supplier Link and Parameters to our component. We can now close the panel. If we check the parameters section of the properties panel, we can see that it has been updated with a lot of new parameters. For now, we can save the library and prepare to update our schematic. To do this, we open the schematic library panel and right click on the component that we wish to update. We then select update schematic sheets. An information dialog will pop up to informing you of how many components in schematic sheets were updated. We can repeat this for every single component that needs to be updated. Heading back to our schematic, we can see that all of the components have been visually updated. And if we check the Atmega IC, we can see that its parameter list has also been updated with the new parameters. These parameters can then later be used in output documentation, such as a bill of materials. Moving over to the PCB, we can inspect the board to ensure that everything is correct and make changes if needed. For example, we can see here there's some text that is mirrored. By double clicking on the mirrored text, I can open its properties by selecting it here. And I can see that it is on top overlay when it should be on bottom overlay. To correct this easily, we can use the Find Similar Objects menu by right-clicking on the component and selecting Find Similar Objects. And if we change the filters to Same for Designator and for Mirrored, 
and we also want to select it for top overlay. So anything that's a designator on the top overlay that's mirrored will be selected because I've got select matched on. You can see all the mirrored text that's on the top overlay is now selected. We can then click on properties and change the layer to bottom overlay. Pressing 3 on the number row of my keyboard puts us into 3D view so I can verify that the designs on, so that I can verify that the designators are now correct. As you can see, D1 and C2 are clipping over pads. So what I can do, switch back to 2D view, select bottom overlay. If I press shift S, I go into single layer view so that it's easier to see. And I can scroll in and just shift these a little as needed. If you want to change the component footprints by adding 3D models or modifying the pad shape, you can easily do this by clicking on design and then make PCB library. This will extract all the footprint data from the PCB and store it in an LTM PCB lib that is part of the design project. And from here, we can edit the footprints. For this demo, I'm going to be adding an, a 3D model for the Atmega IC. So in the PCB library panel, I'm going to select the correct footprint. In this case, it's QFP032. And then select Place and 3D Body. I've already downloaded a model for this demo. But these can often be found on the manufacturer's websites on websites like 3D Content Central and GrabCAD. So what I'll do is I'll select the step model and click on open. To change the mechanical layer that you want to be placing the 3D model onto, you can press tab and select a new mechanical layer in the properties panel. For this example, I'm going to be using mechanical 7 as my 3D body layer. And then I click on the pause icon in the workspace to continue placement. I can already see that my 3D model is incorrectly rotated, so I'm going to place it off to the side here. Pressing 3 on my keyboard, I can go into 3D view and I can see how it's rotated incorrectly. To correct this easily, I can go to Tools, 3D Body Placement, Align Face with Board. I then select the 3D model that I want to align, and then using the green highlight, I select the bottom face of this uh, 3D model. As you can see, the 3D model has been rotated correctly, and I know that pin 1 is here on the XYZ point, and the rotation of this model is already correct, so I can shift it into position. But as you can see here, the legs are clipping through the, through the pads, because when you say align face to board, it puts that flush to what the board would be. So to correct this, we can select the model, open the properties panel, and set the standoff height to zero. This raises the model so that it is sitting correctly on the pads. Pressing two, we return to 2D view. To update the PCB with this new change, first what we do is we go file, save, and we save the PCB library. Next, we right click the component in the PCB library panel and we say update PCB with and the component's name. If you modify multiple components, you can select update PCB with all to push all of those design changes across at the same time. For now, we're just going to do the one. Here, you can select if you've changed any text, silk information, mechanical information, or information on other layers like the paste and the solder resist. In this case, we've only changed something on the mechanical layer, so that is fine to leave that just that checked. And we click on OK. Ultim is now pushing this design change over to the PCB. Once this is done, we can head over to the PCB. And as you can see here, if I switch to the top place, which is mechanical 8, you can see now that there is a green hatch box over our IC. And if I return to 3D view, you can see our 3D model has now been populated onto our PCB. Pressing 2, I return to 2D view. Additionally, if you want to modify the board shape to fit additional components or to fit the board into a new enclosure, 
this is an easy process. To do this, we switch the active layer to the mechanical layer being used to define the board outline. In our case, it's mechanical layer 1, called dimension. Now, we select all lines on this layer. We can do this by clicking on Edit, Select, and then Select All on Layer. This only selects the lines on the dimension layer that make up the board outline. To make these lines easier to work with, we open the Properties panel and set the line width to 0.1 mm. For this demo, we are going to expand the board to the right and include a rounded cutout. The first step is to select the vertical line on the right hand side of the board and then press M to bring up the Move menu. We then select Move Selection by XY. For this example, we are going to move the line 10mm to the right. Now to complete the board outline, we select the line at the top and drag its endpoint until it snaps to the line that we just moved. For the bottom connection, we're going to be including a rounded indent into the board. To do this, we're going to click on Place, Arc, and then we're going to select Arc Edge. This is an edge-defined arc, where we define the, the starting and ending edges of the arc. So we click on point 1, and move our cursor across to point 2. Now, if the arc is bending in the wrong direction, that's fairly easy to fix. We press Spacebar, and it will flip the arc. So then we can click to finish placing the arc. Now, in this case, the arc is a bit thick for what we're currently working with. So we can click on Properties and we set its width to 0.1 millimeters. Once you're happy with the new board outline, select any line and press Tab. This will select all connected lines on the same layer. We can then use these lines to define a new board shape by clicking on Design, Board Shape, Define from Selected Objects. The open area will now fill in black, indicating that the board is now occupying that area. We can switch to 3D view to verify this. Once you are happy with the design and ready to generate outputs, use File, Save All to save all active documents and the active project. Now we can add an outjob file to the project by right clicking on the project name, selecting Add New to Project and selecting Output Job File. The output job file allows you to add various different outputs to your, to your PCB project. This includes things like draw drawings, Gerbers, NC draw files. As you can see here, I'm busy adding those. You can add a bill of materials. You can add assembly drawings, pick and place reports. You can create a 3D print, which is 3D snapshots of the board. You can create a PCB print, which is the various layer information in uh, PDF format. You can in even include a PDF 3D, which is an interactive PDF with a rotatable 3D model embedded into it. This brings us to the end of our webinar. Thank you all for attending. Please let me know if there are any topics you would like to see in upcoming webinars. And if you have any questions or if you need any assistance with Altium, feel free to send me an email and I'll be happy to help. I hope you all have a great day further and enjoy your weekend. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the next webinar. Bye for now.